Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm working on a fly called the Smith from Kelson's book. Um, as you can see, it's already partially finished. I started doing this fly uh, with my GoPro and somewhere in there the battery died. So um, I lost a lot of that footage or I didn't even record it. Uh, I'm tying this fly in hand. Uh, this is kind of a practice fly, so there are flaws. I've already got a few that I can see in there, but uh, for tying it in hand so far, I think I'm pretty happy with how it's going. So instead of just cutting it and uh, going back, I'm going to continue on and uh, you know see how the rest of it goes. Um, being in hand, no vice, minimal tools. Um, as you can see, I've only got scissors, my uh, dubbing needle, and... Um, you know, extra pair of scissors there. Otherwise, um, yeah, no tools. So um, let's continue on with the fly and hopefully um, I get a good result out of this. This is definitely uh, an interesting project. So I'm doing here is just waxing the thread. This is cobbler's wax. This helps your line, your thread rather, uh, hold its wraps and um, holds onto the material much better. <clears throat> now I did this once before, it turned out somewhat okay, but uh, I've been watching um, Whiskey Gin or uh, Gin Woo Lee on YouTube lately and he's really got me into wanting to do this. So I decided to go ahead and go for it. So here I am just adding another length of thread. Next we have some more, the body's got uh, this large silver oval, oval tinsel. Also very used to doing this with a magnifier, so tying this way, uh, I don't get my magnifier. Makes it a little bit harder for me to see. I'm just not used to it. That's all. This was called a catch loop. You make that loop with your finger and then pull the thread through with your needle. And that's how you tie off each material that you're tying in. Next, the throat is some guinea hen. And it's only going to be one or two turns, so. We 
maybe three for a thicker throat if we can swing it. I'm just using my hackle pliers here. This is a technique called doubling your hackle. You're basically just folding your hackle over and that uh, helps it. When you go to wrap it and wrap your either your body hackle or your throat hackle, this will help keep it all in line and wrap much easier. Do one of these catch loops after each material tie in. Oh, oh. Man down. It's a little bit bigger than I had anticipated it being. That's okay. Okay, now these are going to be my underwing here. These are golden pheasant tail swords. There's only, I think, five or six pair of these on either side of the center tail. Um, here, you can see here, this would be a center tail and there's the base. There's the spears, but there's only a few that are this small. They get larger as they get farther away from the center of the tail. So we're going to go ahead and use these. We'll measure them out. About to where we're going to tie in. And we'll strip this back. And here we're going to use some tweezers to create a flat surface. Just 
just blend it out just a little bit. Create a nice little flat spot there. We need that once again. These stalks are rather soft anyway, so when you go to pinch them down, they'll pinch down rather easy. And all I'm doing here is just getting around this a little bit. There's a little bit of a hump right here. So we'd like this wing to lay relatively close to the body to the shank of the hook.
workspace a little bit. Okay. Now we are ready for the main wing. This here is where I'm nervous. <clears throat> I'd say the rest of the easy, the rest of the stuff was relatively easy compared to this. Um, this is the more difficult part. I'll get these all lined up, and I went and I married these ahead of time to kind of speed up the process just a little. I'm going to just line them up. So now this is just equal parts of golden pheasant center tail, red, yellow, and blue turkey, uh, Cory Bustard, and then a gray mottled turkey. for this wing already. wing is a bit small for this hook but let's see how it turns out anyway my golden pheasant is coming apart I'm honestly very amazed that I'm not sure how people do this. As I said in my earlier videos, Holden Pheasant has a tendency to not want to play nice and comes apart very easily. But if you take your time with it, you can kind of get it to go back into place. But this one is just coming apart at every turn. Or every... Every barb, I should say. It's just... A mess. Yep. I'm gonna crash and burn, but this is not coming out well.
Yeah, this wing is way too small for this hook, as you can see. That wing should be should extend out to about where the tip of the tail is, and I should be able to puff it up more like this and have it come out to here. Fortunately, that was the longest material I had. So these flies will have to be made on smaller hooks, unfortunately. But with a done without tools in hand, so far I'm doing all right. Now we need a topping. <clears throat> keep this one with a short topping. I don't believe this one has any sort of um, macaw horns or anything. I think this one is kind of a little on the plain Jane simple side. Kind of why I chose this pattern to do this by hand and tie this fly. I wanted something that was going to be somewhat easier to do.
First we're just going to apply a little bit of head cement to this and kind of get things stuck together. Let that start getting tacky. So while that gets a little tacky, I'll just mess with this a little bit. But um, I gotta say, all in all, I had some struggles with this one. And there's definitely some proportion issues. Um, that was more, I think, material selection. Um, versus issue with the fly itself but I'll review what I'm seeing really quick if you look right here that's just, that's what we call a step or a bump that's that's from when I turn, tied the tinsel in right here it bunched up as I turned it I didn't have my wraps tight enough against the hook shank so the tinsel um, let me find a piece of it here you can see the tinsel is larger here but a little bit thinner as you turn it because it's oval shaped well that oval shape got turned sideways underneath there and twisted um, that was my thread wraps just weren't tight enough to keep it held to the hook shank so that's what wind up happening there um, as you can see my underwing is too long the main wing is too short um, right here in the middle again there's a spot right here where you can see the thread I'm missing a turn of tinsel right there Do a final trim. Now that that head cement has started to dry a little bit, I can come in here with this. This is a cauterizer. And as you can see, all I'm doing is just burning away some of these excess threads and fibers that are sticking up. Burn those away, and you can have a smoother head. And now we'll move on to our black lacquer. Sorry about that, I apparently have another video glitch. I uh, fudged the head a little bit and hit it with my pinky. Um, but uh, this, this head is a little funky. I think most of the fly is a little on the funky side. But I'll be perfectly honest, and I think this came out great. For my first tied in hand without a vise, um, well, my first true married wing in hand without a vice. I think it was all right. It's not my usual um, quality fly, but you can see it turned out pretty okay. And this was definitely an adventure that I'll be taking again soon. I learned quite a bit on this one. Um, I'm really glad that I'm able to share it with all of you so hopefully uh, you like this if you did leave a comment uh, give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more flies tied uh, you got any specific patterns let me know um, hopefully you've subscribed that'll help me keep creating content for you guys and uh, 
As always, happy tying, tight lines.